Hi, it's Chef and Builder J.D. Pendleton. We're back outside on this beautiful 80 degree spring day. And the reason why we're outside is because somebody asked me to do a video today on my uh, YouTube channel about more uses for Zote Soap. Yesterday I published on YouTube, and you can go right here and see it, that link right here above my head. Um, I published the updated version of my homemade laundry detergent. And, um, and this is just real exciting. I just, I love Zote Soap. I'm not getting paid by anybody to advertise Zote, but I can tell you that I'm a big fan of it. So that's what this video is about today. It's going to give you other uses for Zote Soap, things that I use it for. Okay, there are other brands of uh, detergent soaps as well, like Tide. Uh, Tide makes one. Um, this one is only 140 uh, grams, so it would take four of these bars to equal one bar of the Zote Soap. This uh, bar of soap right here was almost $2 a bar. Whereas this bar was only 93 cents. Okay, it only takes one of these to make my homemade laundry detergent. Again, hit that link above my head and you can get that recipe, the updated improved version of it. And, um, and with the Tide, um, I've not even attempted it. The price, the cost wise, I mean, I'm just, I'm impressed with this one. So I have used the Tide for stain removal and that works really well. But this does have a degreaser in it that I really like in the citronella. So now let's talk about some of the things that Zote Soap can do for you and your household for 93 cents. 400 grams, you can see the size of the bar here. Safe for delicates, whites, collars, and darks. Okay, safe for hot water, cold water, works in both. Zote is great for delicates because it's non-abrasive. It has a, uh, what they call a brightener in it or an ocular brightener. And uh, that just helps brighten your clothes. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a basically a chemical free soap. It has uh, coconut oil, tallow, citronella oil, and some fragrances and some uh, organic safe dyes in here. Um, you can catfish with this, and I'm going to give you that recipe here in just a minute. Now, because this has the citronella oils in it, we know what that's good for. You burn citronella candles during the uh, times of year when we get rid of the pests and the mosquitoes outdoors. So, by washing your clothes with this, or just rubbing a little bit when you're out camping, you can help get rid of the mosquitoes. So, this is really good mosquito and pest repellent. I take little wedges of this in like an old piece of pantyhose. And I throw these or like some sachet lacy bags and put little ribbons on them or something. And these make a great uh, drawer and closet sachets. You can hang them up around some of your uh, closets. I mean, instead of hanging up mothballs, hang up these. And it does also repel the pest as well. And because it's got the citronella oil in it, it the scent lasts a long time. This has a long shelf life as far as scent goes. Okay? You can carve Zote Soap. So if you're a soap carver, and there are a lot of people out there, I guess, that do this. Um, I've never done it, but it's my understanding you uh, Zote makes a really good bar for carving and it hardens up nicely. So you can carve this. I had someone ask me about this today and asked me if I could they could carve it into a soldier and into other objects. And I said, try it. And they wrote me back and they said that they did and it worked perfectly. So you can carve Zote soap. Go right here and I'll put my link up for the dishwashing soap. You can make dishwashing liquid out of this. Go over here in this corner and I'll teach you how to make the stain remover and the pre-treater out of the Zote Soap. And that's really good. And you can go over to that and you can read the comments. People swear by that as well. I'm telling you I came up with a perfect recipe for that. This is great for washing your hands if you're a mechanic or you work around greasy things. This really gets your hands clean. And believe it or not, this is great for greasy or oily hair. So you just shampoo your hair with your favorite shampoo. And then you take and put a little bit of this on a wash rag or just in your hand really good, soap it up, put it in your hair, rinse your hair really well, and this gets rid of, this really, really helps you with oily hair. You'll have the most shiniest, perfect looking, fluffy hair. I mean, I love this stuff. I guess you'd have fluffy hair, but you know what I mean. It, it, it'll have a nice volume to your hair. And uh, this is great for that. And yes, I have washed my hair in this. When you use this in your drawers, this keeps away pests in your closets and your, uh, you know, your storage chests and stuff like that as well. So this is just great to store things in. Um, okay, so not only can you clean the mechanic's hands with this, but you can also clean your tools with this. And I use this to clean my tools and also my garden shovels and my garden rakes and things like that for the winter. Before I oil them, 
I'll clean them really good with the Zote soap and a bucket of water. Um, this really gets my dog. Everybody knows I have a Siberian Husky, and this really gets my dog white and clean. Somebody asked me yesterday from Alaska, they came into Walmart, and they said, how did you get your Husky so white? And I said, I have two secrets. One of them is I wash her at the car wash. We wash her with the car wash uh, stuff, which has a little bit of car wax in it, and it really shines her up, and it's got a perfect temperature car wash for her, especially in the winter when we can't do it outside here at the house. But the Zote soap, is great for her fur. It really gives it a shimmery shine. And it's also something else that I use on her that gets her extremely white and it makes her show dog perfect. And we're gonna discuss that in my next video. But try the Zote soap on your pet. It's great for a pet hair, it's great. It also helps repel ticks and other pests on your pet as well. Cause again, it's got the citronella in it. So we give her and take her to the vet every month. She takes her uh, pills for ticks and she also, we again, we put the Zote soap on her. And, uh, and so far, we've been really lucky with the, uh, with the ticks and things. Um, if you're gonna take this camping, hang a chunk of this up in the tent. You know, take a drill, drill a hole in here, put some, um, you know, some sort of tent uh, roping, you know, that uh, nylon roping through it. Tie this up in the tent, and this helps repel bugs in your tent when you're out camping and in your motor home. So this is a really great thing to keep. Um, I put a little solution to this, melt a little of this with a little bit of baking soda, just a little bit of borax, and, um, and I use this to wash the uh, kitchen surfaces in my kitchen, okay, so all my countertops and my sinks and things, and this really makes, as a chef, this really makes my pots and pans shine, I mean they really shine, so it does make a good degreaser and a good cleaner as well. Now, I've, everybody knows that I'm a grandmother and I just had my grandson Carter. And this makes for a great diaper and baby clothes cleaner. I just used it on some of his tops before he wore them. Uh, don't add any borax to the mix. Uh, you can go, like I said, to the laundry, how to make my laundry detergent. And I'll show you how to make this. We'll also show you how to make this without the borax or, you know, a minimum amount of borax even. And that makes for really good for delicates or for just baby laundry. And, um, and the stains came right out and all that formula and the breast milk and stuff that stains the little the shirts and the little poopy diapers that stain the, you know, stain the rims of the onesies and things. This is really great for that, okay? So try some soap for baby laundry. And what I used to do is just get a pail, like a, like a three, three and a half gallon pail. And I'd keep a little bit of soap soap, a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of borax and a little bit of washing soda and some baking soda and I'd put it down inside that bucket and I would keep the diapers after I rinsed them out and washed them really good, I'd put them down inside that bucket and I would let them soak for a couple of days. I'd just pile up the diapers in there because my kids all wore cloth, cloth diapers and, and I guess they're in fashion again. Remember, this was the 1980s and the early 1990s, but, uh, but they're like in fashion again. So soap so was great for washing diapers and, uh, and this has been around a long time. I, you can soak, um, the, you can rub the collars off your white dress shirts, uh, the cuffs, you know, place where you get dirty on jackets and things like that. It's great for that. And I have a lot of white cashmere coats and I will use the Zote soap to wash that type of thing. Just be sure and read the instructions on the, on the garment or the item first to make sure that you can, you can hand wash it. And a lot of things will say that you have to dry clean. There's a lot of things I would still go ahead and hand wash. Okay, mix a little bit of this and some borax and some baking soda together. And it makes for a great oven degreaser and an oven cleaner. It's a non-toxic oven cleaner. I love this stuff for that and it works. It really makes all my racks shine. Um, people used to ask me how I'd get my pots and pans so clean. My Zote dishwashing liquid right there. That's how I got my pots and pans clean. And I've got other people that have done reviews on my, on my recipe for that. And um, absolutely love it. So be sure to hit that link as well. So I would have to say my number one prepper item things that I store, and you can see I keep jars full of these, I keep five gallon buckets full of these, okay, is the Zote Soap. The 400 grams of Zote Soap. It comes in, uh, I believe, seven ounces as well. This is 14.1, so it comes in bars half this size, you know, half this thickness. But I always get the larger ones because I can always take slices off. So if you can find it, try to get the 400 grams or the 14.1 14 ounces, if you can. Um, but I would have to say, uh, my number one prepper item for storage would have to be Zote Soap. It would have to be definitely be Zote Soap. It's a non-food item, it would be Zote Soap. This eliminates almost all cleaners underneath your sink by using this solution. 
I kid you not, between the vinegar and the orange oil solution, the orange rind solution that I can give you, uh, this right here is my favorite. You can uh, put this in for wood floors. Um, there's so many things that you can do with this right here. I Yes, I have used just a little bit of this and a little bit of water and a little bit of vinegar and I have mopped wood floors and my wood floors shine. You, you've seen them, they shine. And the smell. That's my number one favorite thing on this is I love the citrus scent of Centronella. I love it. And, uh, and All right, so let's talk about the ingredients that's in Zotso. We have coconut oil. We have tallow. It also contains sodium chloride, glycerin, citronella, citronella oil, an optical brightener, and in some bars, organic dye. But if you're worried about the dye, I know it's organic dye, but if you're worried about it, just get the white bar, which has the blue label on it. They have a pink, white, and a blue. And uh, just be sure and get the white bar if you don't want any dyes in it. But this is the pink bar. I have no issue with it at all. I know that it's a good dye. It's not, it's not bad for you dye. And the nice thing about citronella is, and the perfume scents in this is, is that it's a long lasting scent. So it has long shelf life for your clothes and for your towels and your linens as well. When I pick up a bath towel that's been in the cabinet for, you know, a couple of days, it still smells really good. All right, so now that I've told you my favorite item in my household for cleaning, and I've showed you my favorite prepping item that I think has just long-term storage go to this is it it's a non-food item this is it zotso it does so many things i'm going to even prove it to you by giving you my catfish bait recipe okay so grab a pen and paper and i'm going to give you that recipe right now all right you're going to grate about a quarter one of these bars or so to that you're going to add an eighth of a cup of water and you're going to melt the soap in that eighth a cup of water. Do it on the stove in a very small pan, that's fine. To that you're going to add about a, about a, about a sixteenth to an eighth of a cup of uh, bacon fat, beef tallow, some sort of pork tallow, some sort of a fat that's, that's come off of your meat. It can be beef, pork, uh, chicken, whatever but they really like the bacon. I like to use the bacon fat. So just a little bit, maybe just a tablespoon or two of bacon fat into that. And then you're going to add two drops, just two drops of garlic juice. Just squeeze a garlic and you can even add the garlic if you want to, but I think find better just to kind of get some of that juice in there. And then, um, and then swirl that in there. Just a little bit of garlic. That's all it takes. It doesn't take much. And it doesn't repel the fish. It actually attracts it. So when you get all that put into a mold, and sometimes I'll even add a few little few little teaspoons of oatmeal to that just to get it to mold up really good. But this right here hardens up on its own. You don't even have to do the oatmeal part. And you put it in some sort of a mold. I have some rose molds, so I just put this in rose molds. I don't know why I'm fishing with roses, but you know, like the little candy molds. And I just pour that in the candy molds, and I just sit that out or put it in the refrigerator to harden up. And I have catfish bait. And it also works, some people say it works on carp, but we don't fish for carp up here up north. That's, a, that's what we call a mud, a mud bottom feeder. We don't, we don't eat carp up here. But down south, they do eat carp. I don't know if it's a different type of carp or why, but we don't eat that up here. But we do eat catfish. I mean, that's why I keep so many of them. I know in an SHTF situation, I can clean up the grease, I can clean up my hands, I can wash my hair, I can wash my body, I can wash the dog, I can wash the dishes and I can uh, catfish. I can go fishing with it. So, um, I mean, the, the uses for it are endless. So that's just some of the things that you can do with Zoat Soap. I hope this has helped you and I hope this has blessed you in some way. And if you have some other ideas for Zoat Soap, just leave a comment below because we would love to share and we'd love to learn from you as well as teach you. This is Chef and Builder Janie Pendleton. Let's go plant a redbud tree next. Blessings.